Hi there, little rodent crawling around in the YouTube algorithm. Thanks for stopping by. It's me, Snootle. I'm doing another one of these. It's been a little while since I did a song breakdown. The last one was like quite a while ago. But yeah, I'm doing another one of these. And there's not really any reason I haven't done one until now, other than just I got distracted with a million other things. But we're here, and that's what matters. Anyway, so this song breakdown is about Chatoy and Gods, which, if you're not familiar, this is the Vanilla Random Gods track equivalent that is part of Momice's Sunlit Trail expansion, specifically part of Chasing Wind, which is a region in that expansion that adds a new iterator. And it's a very cool expansion, it adds a bunch of new regions, a new iterator, all very high quality. You should definitely check it out, it's on the Steam Workshop right now, not sponsored. Anyway, so this song is like the climax of the region. You've explored all these new, cool, interesting, aesthetically varied areas throughout Chasing Wind, and you've reached the center of the complex. A big part of it, I feel specifically drawing from Vanilla's Random Gods, which is... This was kind of my reference point for this song. I kind of wanted to channel the energy of that piece in Chitwin Gods, but like, do my own spin on it. And the idea there was something about Chasing Wind. It's kind of about recreating the experience of like, experiencing an iterator for the first time, because that's a hell of an experience in Vanilla Rain World. It's this massive superstructure that is kind of incomprehensibly big compared to everything else you've seen before. And I mean, obviously you can't quite capture that first time thing again, but you can definitely get towards it. And that's kind of what this region does a lot of. It's got like a lot of unique aspects to it that make it feel fresh, that make it feel like feel like it's not just another iterator that is like five pebbles, but different. Um, and that's kind of what I was channeling with this music, because talking with my mice, the, the vibe of this music is kind of like overwhelming chaos. You are a tiny little speck in an incomprehensibly large and complex machine, and this is kind of like you're being confronted with the overwhelming chaos and you don't understand it. It's ridiculous and crazy and the music really channels that kind of feeling of awe and just scale. It's really cool. <laughs> I like Rain World. Anyway, yeah, so that's something I wanted to channel in this, but I wanted to do something different with it and also kind of amp it up. Like, you'll see this song is kind of like Random Gods, but turned up to 11. Like, I really went ham with making it just as, like, full and crazy as possible. Because we want it to be, like, a fresh experience. And part of that was, like, if you're already used to Random Gods, that kind of sets a baseline of how intense feels intense. Like, listening back to Random Gods after making this song, it doesn't feel that intense. Whereas the first time I experienced it, it was, like, incredibly overwhelming feeling. And that's just because you're, like, as you get used to it, it feels more expected. But yeah, so this is kind of, like, you've got this high baseline set by Random Gods, so it's kind of going even further than that to make it feel, again, like, exhilarating and powerful and all that stuff. Um, yeah, so if we jump into the project here, you may notice that I am not in FL Studio right now, and that's because I basically switched to using another DAW called Reaper, and it's really great. I highly recommend it. The amount of customizability is kind of insane. Like, if you compare this to if you opened Reaper for the first time, it looks quite a bit different. I'll go through some of the customizations I have at the end after I've talked about the song, just because they're cool. I really like so all the community modifications and stuff that have been made for Reaper. really lets you kind of make it your own. 
But anyway, yeah, I'm in Reaper. The basis of it is the same. You've got tracks, oops, you've got tracks, you've got like mini items and audio items, you've got automation, it's it's all transferable. 90% of doors are the same. But yeah, so you can see here like the effects that are in the chain and that's where I'll view them from. But yeah, let's just go through instrument by instrument. I'll start with the bass because that's the first one, might as well. I kind of, if you listen to this on its own, it may sound kind of familiar. Yeah, it's kind of, this ended up turning into like a fun parallel of the superstructure threat scene's bass, which is kind of, it has that wobbliness to it. Um, that wasn't, that was kind of just something that emerged from from my experimentation. It's not completely obvious in the um, in the final version, but it's a fun detail. And yeah, it just kind of, this came from me using Cardinal, which you'll see here, this might be a bit confusing if you're not familiar with modular synthesis, but it's, it's not that complicated. Um, yeah, this was me experimenting with modular synthesis, which is something that I haven't really haven't really dabbled with all that much, especially when I actually made this back when I made this song. It was pretty new to me. So this was kind of me figuring it out. So yeah, I ended up with something I kind of liked and then it became the actual track, like the bass for this track. Um, yeah, so what we've got going on here, it's not that complicated, but it's kind of like you can imagine this like an effects chain except it's non-linear and and like you route things from one little module which is kind of like a mini VST you write out from one to the next using these cables which which can kind of connect up in any way from any input to any output it's pretty fun in that you can like you can connect anything to anything kind of um, and yeah, I'm pretty surface level with this. This is not super complex, but basically what it's doing to get this fluttering effect, you can see this little knob moving here. Um, it's basically like a distortion, like a wave fold sort of thing, um, that is plugged into like an LFO. This is just a volume control. And then this is like, this is an LFO with a bit of randomness mixed in. Um, so it's like, this is kind of controlling the range of this rapid fluctuation using an LFO. So you get this kind of wobble effect. Um, and then that is also, is also plugged into a few other things like the, some of the controls in this synth block, which is, yeah, it's a bit overwhelming, but yeah, I just kind of plugged things into other things and messed with the knobs until it sounded interesting. Um, and then there's just a reverb on it. That's about it. Um, yeah. There's also this warp one. I forget what that does. I think that's just like a distortion. Um, yeah, that's that. There's not too much to talk about with the bass. It's just kind of a cool bass sound that is a fun, fun parallel to superstructure for thing. Anyway, so this is, this is the chords, which is kind of like the star of the show and the song. Yeah. So it's, it's got like this very like chaotic drive effect. Um, yeah, very. This is like the source of a lot of the chaos of the track. Um, so yeah, what we have going on here is, so the way these tracks kind of work is they create the chaos through, through like a rapid change of something, like fluctuating something very rapidly. And in 
in random gods, what you have going on is you have a very fast LFO, which is kind of like this stuttering effect that you see in you see in that song, and that kind of brings a lot of chaos through like constantly changing like the volume or the cutoff or whatever whatever they have going on in there. Um, I kind of went for a different approach. I wanted something a bit different to random gods, but still like channeling that energy. So instead the rapid fluctuation is done through an arpeggiator. Um, and you'll see it's got some automation on it, but I will turn this off temporarily, um, just to demonstrate. So you can see this, the sound and I actually actually edited something cool you can do in Reaper is edit the code of some of their plugins because they're just done in like a scripting language. So what I did here was I uncapped the um the maximum rate of the arpeggiator and set it to 256 when it's normally like it's normally like 32 or something. So you can see this has like an absurd amount of range. Actually, I don't even use half of it. But you can see here, if I slow this down to like a normal value, this is what's going on in the background. It's just playing through the notes of the chord like an arpeggiator. And when I speed this up, then you get this kind of chaos effect. This kind of sounds like rapidly beeping signals or something. Yeah, so if I then re-enable the modulation, you can see I kind of fluctuate this around to make it a bit more natural sounding. It's just got a random LFO on it. Um, yeah, the, this is the source of the sound. And the um, the actual sound itself, I mean, there's a bunch of effects going on here, but it's just kind of like a super compressed, like plucky sound. You, you heard it in the previous bit. It's like that plucky sound that is just like, yeah, you can see it's like a very short pluck with a quick, quick decay, with a quick release, I mean. Um, and yeah, it's just kind of like, a weirdly stretched and FM modulated sine slash square wave going on here. And then in terms of effects, it's pretty basic. Just flanger and a phaser stuck on there. Got some silly stuff going on. Got some reverb, there's also reverb on this. Um, and I'll just open up this effects list. So you can see I have a pitch shifter, which I use here to um, I'm not actually sure if I use this one. I think this is just a duplicate because the way I actually bend the pitch is using Vital's pitch mod wheel. Um, but yeah, you can see this automation here is what's going on with that. So you can see this is something that Random Gods does as well, and I, I really like just kind of subtle pitch bends that kind of flex the notes a little bit. It makes it feel kind of like like you compare it to like bending on a guitar, it gives it more like nuance and variety. You can see. I mean it's kind of not super audible there, but this is a bigger one coming up. Kind of just kind of just bends down. And you'll also notice here I have like these weird like midi note kind of it looks like they've exploded a bit. The there's lots of like tiny little midi note clips in between all of these. And that's kind of just because I wanted to have like gradual transitions between the chords. And this was just like the most straightforward way to do it, where it's got like because if you just go straight from this to this 
um, then you'll find the the transitions a bit like stiff. Whereas if I want it to like gradually transition by like every time it goes over one of these notes, you'll see. You can hear it like introduces this note into it. But like it's only sometimes. So this is kind of makes it like it rarely the next note up plays. And then as the MIDI notes get longer, it's in the arpeggiator for longer. And then eventually it goes the other way. So like in this place, it's playing both. It's playing both of these notes. And then the upper one stays constant and the lower one fades out. So then you end up with just, just this chord. And yeah. And in terms of the arrangement, there is, um, there's, it's pretty basic. It's just kind of shifting between, um, shifting between some chords. It's got like this chord. And I also do some higher notes for like more variety. I'm like shifting the texture as things go on. And then I also have this part here, you'll see it. That's the Random Gods motif. Sundown, I mean, it is in Random Gods. I only include like the first half of it and then I make it do something else, but it's just like, it's a cool thing to reference and brings you back to, again, kind of like reliving your first experience of, of Five Pebbles and of Rain World. And it's like, wow, this is just like the time that I played Rain World for the first time. This is awesome. Kind of channeling that. Yeah. In terms of the other effects on this, you'll see, I just have like a bit crush, a uh, pitch shift, a uh, really intense compression, limiter, uh, why is this on here? It's doing nothing. Um, but yeah, just, just some like fairly basic effects. And of course, Valhalla Supermassive, which is my favorite big reverb. This is great for just like giant textures. Um, yeah, I slap it on a lot of things in my music, and it sounds great. I recommend this plugin, it's free, check it out. Yeah, so next we have this accents layer, which is just the body layer, but copy-pasted. And I changed up some of the effects, and it's just kind of pitched up, and we have the EQ is cutting out almost all of the lows, so you'll see. It's just like these high notes that are harmonizing with the bass, with like the body. And you'll see if I enable both. It's all just part of like a big chord, but I kind of split it up so I could have this specifically in the high frequencies. And it kind of ebbs and flows throughout. It's just kind of the chords that the body is playing, but broken up and shuffled around. and a bit quieter. So it's just kind of in the background, filling out the high end, because I'm kind of trying to, trying to fill out the full frequency spectrum. You'll see the bass is the low end, this is the mids, and this is the highs, and this last layer is also the highs. But that way we're getting like all of the frequency spectrum. It makes it overwhelming, it makes it huge, it makes it very intense. Um, yeah. So that's that. And then the final layer, there's not too much going on here. Um, it's just, I'll find the source sound. So this is the source sound. It's just a sample from my sample pack. Funny little beeps. Thought it would be fitting for the theme. But this is just like an extra little textural element. So I have that sound as a sample. I believe it's like, squashed in a little bit so it plays a bit faster and higher pitched to really like get that high end and then we've got got like a very intense high pass we have a delay we have this frequency echo plugin which 
is very fun. It has like some weird effects on audio. It kind of it's kind of like a delay, but every every repeat of the delay like shifts its pitch around and I've got it just wiggling back and forth so the pitch goes all over the place. It kind of just makes some weird glitchy noisiness. And yeah, this has just got some automation LFOs on it. Um, Valhalla Supermassive, of course. I also have this little plate reverb for even more reverb. And this is kind of like, plate reverbs have like a lot of high end fitting for something that's all high end. <laughs> but yeah, you'll see what this sounds like. It's kind of this kind of sparkly, sparkly, shimmery, super high end sound that is like very distant and echoey. And it just adds like a little bit of shimmer to the track. Like if I, if I play the full thing, you can hear it there. The belly comes through, but it sounds like there's, rather than purely the arpeggiators going on, it kind of syncs with it. And it makes it feel like the arpeggiators are just like one part of a more full, like sonic space. Like these are like the little background processes pinging out in the distance. Or they might even be, they might kind of blend with the arpeggiator and make it feel like it's got more going on than it does, which is always nice. Um, yeah, so that is about it for Chatoyant Gods. Thanks for, thanks for watching. This is really fun. I want to do more of these more frequently than I did the last one because I really like talking about these things and sharing knowledge that people might find useful if you're making your own iterator theme or just your own music, but you wanna, wanna channel these vibes, you're welcome. I'm happy to help. I always like sharing information with the community. I feel like it's a great way for everyone to get better at what they do. So yeah, that's that. I'll also talk a bit about some of the Reaper customizations I have going on. Um, so the theme that I use is called Smooth 6. It's very nice. It just kind of, it's just a UI theme that changes how all like the tracks and sections look. It's pretty nice. I'll link it in the description. Also this, um, this way of viewing the effects in in the channels. This is, I think, a bit like what Pro Tools does. Um, I've never used Pro Tools, but I do like it. So I added this. It's kind of just like an edit to the Smooth Six theme file. I'll leave a link to the tutorial I used in the description because it's pretty easy. Um, but yeah, I've got that. I have, no, oh, I have so many extensions. It would take an hour or more to go through them all, probably multiple hours. One cool one is this rolling sampler, global sampler it's called, um, which is just like, it constantly records, constantly records audio coming out of your door. And then, then you can just drag it into that and it saves it as a file. Um, that's not working, never mind. Um, but yeah, that, that audio file had the sound that was just playing and you can see it has the waveform up here and you can just select whatever you want and drag it in. It's very cool. Um, and yeah, I've got like some other things going on here. I honestly don't even use a couple of these. I should probably remove them from my from bar. Um, but I have this relauncher, which is very cool. Um, it's kind of a project browser that's a little more a little more advanced than the vanilla one and a, a lot nicer looking. That's one thing with Reaper is some of the default UI is a bit ugly, but but it's functional. Um, yeah, so that is, that is all I have to say for this video. Thank you very much for watching and I'll catch you in something else potentially. Thank you, goodbye.
Thank you.